Fifty dollars. Okay. Thank you, Angie. Now, what y'all know about being poor? What y'all know about borrowing from the neighbor next door? What you know about borrowing? What y'all know about that? I just want y'all to understand that twenty dollars is a lot of money to swallow your pride. Angie Stone, everybody. We got some things we need to talk to y'all about. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several things that we're going to be mentioning to y'all. Oh, by the way, I'm getting ready to download PDF Exchange, the latest version, and I'll get back to this later. See? PDF Exchange update. Now, when you do this, it's going to get rid of your last professional version and give you the temporary version. So you're going to have to re-upload certain things, but that's not for me to explain. You're going to do your research on that, okay? All right. All right, now. Ladies and gentlemen, we can go right here. This is the P.O. Box. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the P.O. Box, and I put Void Eon. Opt out. Then the box number. Same box number that's on the website. You guys are not allowed to communicate with me or SACOM at this address. If you do so, your junk will be sent back. Okay? Return to sender. Won't even be opened. It's just the way things go. This is not a mailing address for y'all. This is a legal address for the... For the man! Okay. Now, I want y'all to pay attention because there's something y'all don't understand. Hey, Angie, give me a second. Did you all know that Congress doesn't get to regulate the U.S. mails. They don't have any authority. There was no law authorizing, permitting, or allowing Congress to regulate United States mails. Ladies and gentlemen, the right to send mail is a secured and protected right under the First Amendment. You have the right to assemble, to communicate through speech or otherwise, the right to protest, the right to report or receive news, because it's been secured. It is your right naturally. You have the right to receive a communication from anyone you want to, anyone to whom you solicit information from. So that's your right to receive mail. You have a right to notify somebody there's a problem. That's your right to send mail. Follow me? So what I'm trying to say, y'all, is Congress don't get to regulate that. See, originally the mail was being delivered because that postman worked for the United States government. The Postal Service provides a government function but are not postal employees, which is why the United States Postal Service does not receive a budget from the government. All the monies they make, they have to do so commercially. Go back and look at Congress, how they will not give the Postal Service any money. And how they regulate it that in order for them to take care of their salary of their people, they have to have, I believe it is 50 to $75 million on reserve just for the pensions. And they have to generate that money on their own. It's amazing, ain't it? Well, so, since the Postal Service is not a constitutional service, but your right to receive mail is, the fact that the Postal Service has been given that privilege, that's right, and it's a privilege, it's not a right. They don't have a right to deliver your mail. That is a privilege. We allow them to deliver the mail. Other than that, it's up on the trustees to make sure we get our mail. Now, I know, I know it's a little complicated for some of you, but you just got to understand that Congress doesn't get to regulate the delivery of mail. That's exactly what they did with the United States Postal Service because the Postal Service is providing a service. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to look at this. See this section right here? The person signing this form 
states that he or she is the person executor blah 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 y'all seen that before right now I want y'all to pay attention there is this that there is no attempt to mislead and or to give a false impression my property is private property household and or consumer goods not utilized for profit or commercial gain it is not subject to excise or regulate uh-uh, that ain't supposed to be. Come on, get my U. I just typed in a U. Oh, I got to go to the edit part. Sorry, y'all. Come on, edit. This edit? Okay. Huh? It ain't letting me edit. Let's do typewriter. Nope, not typewriter. Text box? Nope, not text box. Huh. I know it, it's editable. I'm going to get regulating or regulating by any party without specific or exclusive permission, which <laughs> has not. That's how tired I am. I ran into a problem this morning. I'll explain it in a minute. Which has not, as of this time, been granted any party and or person and or entity. Please cease and desist for any such further presumptions. The right to communicate via mail, the right to communicate via mail is absolute, secured, and wholly protected. I need not ask for permission, as delivery services are privileges for the service provider, but mandatory as a result of the will of the people via mandate and the paying of taxes. Yeah, when you paid them taxes, you were paying for your mail to be delivered. Even though none of your tax revenues go to the Postal Service, they do go to Congress in order to facilitate the delivery of mail. It did not say that Congress could not hire an organization to do it. That was the whole purpose of them in 19, I think it was 1862, when they came up with the Postage Act. That's why it says that no mail was uh, that weighed over a half ounce was to be more than two cents and one cent for each half ounce over an ounce. Well, anyway, it says by a mandate and the paying of taxes, I am a beneficiary of the public trust. I do not owe an excise for such exemplary, such an exemplary position. Yes, my position as a beneficiary is exemplary. I'm exempt. And that, I forgot the T. See, it didn't do the spell check at the time, but I was Russian because I didn't know how to be an American. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I will get this, for me, I'll get this taken care of. This ain't up there for y'all. Uh, there is so much going on. I'll explain what's going on here so that you guys can have an idea, and it's going to take me a week and a half before I can get it fixed. That's how bad things is. I do not submit under perjury a statute, as this would interfere with my right to practice my religion, because I only submit to my God's will, okay? And that's how I put this on this form. And this is my form. This is not theirs. This is mine. Now, the only thing that I didn't do on this that I know that I have to do, I know I have to do it. Okay? I knows that I have to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to put on here, where is the form at? Where is the form at? I have to put, and you're going to have to put on yours if you change it. A M E N D E D F O R. That's that's what's been happening because of my being so tired. Uh, the hitting of keys is just a reflex. It's not the button I'm intending on hitting, and so that's why you see that because I didn't speak that into the computer. I typed that in. So that's what the issue. Now the reason why you put amended format because you have the right to amend any document okay and the trustees don't get to order you to do anything the trustees don't get to order you 
to do anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will be the gist of the information provided in this video, okay? Now, shall we continue? Oh, you're going to continue? Okay, go ahead. Continue. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that... Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh -uh, I did not mean to do that. There you go. Nope, come on down. Okay, you see how it switched this dark pot? This dark pot. <laughs> dark part to the bottom as opposed to the top. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to take this call. I know who it is. This is Mr. Rice. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Angie Stone. There was somebody, that was somebody asking me a question regarding SATCOM and the new SATCOM, the uh, SAT Packers. And that person was not Mr. Rice. I'm, I'm expecting a call back from Mr. Rice because I called him, then he called me, then I called him, and it's like, I don't like paying tag. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solar system. I have 10 panels that gives me approximately about 300 watts per panel. Okay, let's just do the approximate. Let's we're not going to deal with the the exact amount, but 300 watts per panel, which makes it three kilowatts, three thousand watts for the entire system. All I can tell you is five was giving me more than enough energy. I hooked up all ten, and the system couldn't handle ten, even though the system says it can handle ten. I woke up this morning and there was some. Doesn't smell right. It smells like wires getting very hot. And I checked everything. Couldn't smell anything near the components, but I could definitely smell it smelled like wires getting hot. A couple hours later, the MPPT, which is the charge controller, which is what all of, all of that wattage and voltage is coming into, started smoking. I could look inside of it and see it getting red hot and the system failed and that was only with six panels connected I unconnected and this was at night there's no energy coming in because there's no sunlight and it, it, whatever energy is out there is trickling so not enough to shorten anything out it was this morning that I noticed that said go on out there you smell it doesn't smell right going out there and disconnect the other ones and I did next thing I know I realized that I could have been outside working on something and my entire place could have gone up in smoke now I got insurance to cover everything but that would have been a headache and a half ladies and gentlemen that would have been too much to go through so I will be without my MPP charger for the next week and a half, which means I'll be back to charging things up with the generator. And I got more than enough fuel to use the generator, so I'll be alright. I just don't really appreciate the fact that I can only use one of the batteries, can't use. Well, no, actually, I can use both of the batteries. When I charge up one battery, I can charge up both, and that will get me through a couple of days. So I will be able to survive for that week and a half thank y'all i just figured it out by talking to you all all right that's that now i gotta go out here and use the auger because a backhoe that thing will cost me from six to eight hundred dollars just to run a backhoe to put in the septic tank plus i also have to buy the tubing and the connections for the septic tank which would have been almost a thousand dollars on top of the money that I spent and I don't like just spending just to be spending so what I did is I ordered the tubing from Home Depot and they're gonna deliver but when I called they treated me as if I was a nobody now y'all know that I don't like being treated as if I'm somebody's nobody you know what I'm saying you know what Angie we're gonna go to a different song uh, we're going to go with you and 
Calvin Richardson singing more than a woman. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just dropped my phone. It's in a carrying case, so it didn't cause much damage. The whole purpose of me telling y'all all of this is because there are people who are concerned about the uh, system and what I'm doing and how far things are coming along. Going out here, this is going to be back staking and breaking and manipulating work. I promise you I will be in a lot of pain every single day because all I did was help to complete the trench the other day that I am using for the water. That in and of itself was a... Uh, oh, Lord. Well, anyway, Home Depot is going to be delivering my tubing and my pipe for the septic and I will be able to let's just say hook that up and have that in by my hope is beginning of November if not it'll be somewhere close around that I will make sure that the hole is deep enough and the ground is level I even had to order some snow shovels so that I can shovel the dirt out of the hole as I'm digging so that will be utilized for me to, and yes, snow shovels, I only am using that, not because they can handle all the dirt, but because they're wide enough and I can shovel a lot more dirt than I can with a regular shovel. Yes, 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 I know how to think. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to stay on. There is so much more that can be talked about, but you guys know about sending the post office the information letting them know that you're the executor, and then recognizing you as the president of the corporation, well, that's what I'm getting ready to do again for this property. And because the post office wants to cause me a problem, and I'm getting ready to file a lawsuit against the post office because I'm tired of their stupidity. And as I mentioned to you, post office is a private corporation. It is not government. Hold on one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a couple of minutes because I just noticed that Google has taken down all of everything talking about the two cents, two cents postage stamp method where you send out mail, two cents each item. I have done it. I even did it while I was on vacation in Puerto Rico and in the U.S. So, yes, it does work. Okay. However... The video is taking a moment because of the overlay. Let's see. And it's a short video. But what I would definitely suggest to all of you is to do your research on it. It comes from the Banking Act of the uh, 1800s. And this is where Congress first created the U.S. Postal Service. They had the postmaster, they created a contract, they needed somebody to deliver the mail, and they needed a group, a company. And of course it was one that they had already had their feet into the, uh, the mire, so to speak, of the situation and already had their hookups. Look, all those people back then who did all of that crooked stuff, they're not here anymore. Yes, 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 they left a legacy, have children, family, friends, all of these morons who have inherited and don't even realize what they're, well, maybe for the most part, most of them do. Give me a second. One more second. Please. Kind of interesting that they got, they got in the mail. Come on, today, Derek. Today, uh, uh, there's a letter well. that. Hold on, y'all. That, that was addressed quite differently from most letters that I see. Uh, notice that it has a two cents. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a method that we've talked about. Um, this is the two cent stamp from the post office. Okay, that's the two cent stamp. You go to the post office. I used to have tons of two cent stamps. I still have a bunch of them around here because I was using them on a regular basis sending them out and sometimes you'll get the stubborn postmaster or the stubborn uh, post office and this letter has a lot of wording on the front 
because most of it is most of it it is most of it it is it is, is the law. Hold on, statutory law. stamp here, and that it was um, addressed with. Now, see, does the individual's information without the United States and free zone and all of that stuff? And then here is the actual law, the statutory law that applies to those federal employees. Derek, Derek J, and family, then the family name, and then, uh, um, you, know, you know, there's all this kinds of legalese down below. Down below. Uh oh. And, uh, Let me see, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to do is I want to go back because I want to show you something. So. Uh, uh, this was sent this to was me sent by, my, by my friend Josh, and, and he inside, he, inside on, the Derek. Uh, uh, I want to go this back was, here. Uh, right uh, here. Uh, and. and uh, Nope. Uh, two, uh, two, this was sent to me by my friend Josh, Josh and he inside he's Derek, down stop below. It. Be quiet for a second. Uh, sorry, I have to go back a couple of more seconds because I want to show you something on the face of the envelope. Because he he holds it up, but he doesn't hold it up. So there's your Title 18 on the document. We're gonna go to the web page where he shows it, where it says specifically. That all mail was to go out at two cents. The reason why it was supposed to go out at two cents is because Congress had no authority to regulate it. However, what Congress could do was Congress could hire a company to do the job it was supposed to do. Okay? This law has not been changed, or statute has not been changed by Congress. Okay? Now, the without the United States, I'm not a big fan of that phrase, but, you know, so many people use it. I'm going to let Derek finish talking because it's only a minute video. Derek, you have my permission to keep talking. It'll be a minute, y'all. He, he's shy. Come on, Derek. I ain't got all day. While Derek is uh, trying to catch up to us, we're going to show y'all the link that's underneath his video. Uh-oh. I can't even take you. Oh, you know, I remember this free cane. I don't think it exists anymore. I don't think that link exists anymore. I think that it's gone. I remember that link. I, I didn't know that's where he was sending us. I, I believe that's gone. I believe that don't exist no more, y'all. The information is on the internet. You guys can find it. Now, as you see... They, um, fictitious name or address, and they put that information on there because, as I'm letting you guys know, at the beginning of this video, I'm not doing the video because of this. I'm doing the video based on the facts. My right to property is mine. The government doesn't have any. This is the United States. The United States was created with very much this purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, my property is mine. The post office doesn't get to tell me what my address is. I tell them what my address is. I don't care about their system because there is no law generating their system. The post office does not control the addresses within the city. The post office does not control the addresses within the state. They are federal. Your address and, is and, private. Uh, uh, this was sent this to, was me, sent by to me by my friend Josh, Josh and, and he inside, inside the letter, the letter he put another put envelope, envelope um, that's um, mailed to him, to him from me with a two cent stamp. So this is a way to sort of educate, educate the postmaster in the Portsmouth area, area. let him know that there is this law that's still on the books about how the post office is supposed to operate, how they are not allowed to charge more than two cents per, like, letter, uh, this type of letter, and um, there were letters that Josh sent to me in the past that didn't get through, and so he, he wrote a letter right to the postmaster to let him know, hey, uh, someone failed to send the letter along. If you don't know what the rule is, here it is, and I'll put a link down below to the letter that Josh wrote to my local postmaster so that if you are interested in sending letters to your friends for two cents, you can try this where you are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I read through some of the comments. Ooh-wee, and they, they, they're full of a whole lot of stuff. 
okay? And no, the government doesn't cause you any problems when you do this. Uh, well, look at what you went through. I, like I said, because there is a statute. Here is a video how to send a letter in the U.S. for three cents. Okay, that's if it's 9, 10, 12 pages. The information is out there, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing has changed. They have not updated the statute. They have not updated the statute. Just for y'all's information, there's a 10-minute video. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about the information in this person's video. How to colon send a letter in the U.S. for three cents. I don't know if the information is valid or not in the video. I've not seen it. I'm only doing this for your benefit, not for mine. What I am doing is not trying to save people money. I'm trying to show you that if you understood the basic fundamentals of their statute then you would not be overpaying all this time now if it were me and guess what i'm about to do i know for a fact that i have sent out thousands of letters over the course of the last 50 years thousands of letters so i'm just gonna write that junk off and i'm gonna attach the copy of the law okay that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I'm looking to see. Yeah, see, he didn't give. Uh, usually, they give templates showing you what they're talking about. Oh, I see what he did. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I think he did the postcard thing. I don't think he did the uh, three stamp letter, but I'm about to see now. Give me a second. Because my system is running slow because of y'all. That's right. I'm going to blame it on y'all because I can't blame it on myself. Okay? I ain't selfish. I ain't going to blame nothing on myself. What's wrong with y'all? But blame it on somebody else because that's the thing to do. That's the unselfish thing to do is to blame things on other people. So I'm blaming it on y'all. Okay? Just as long as you understand. All right. Let's see if it'll play. I don't think it will. But let me pause y'all just to make sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what has happened is nobody has watched this video or commented on this video since 2013. The cutlery lover, whom is what he calls himself, he has 585,000 subscribers. Okay, 585,000. He did this video, and I want y'all to hear him explain pay attention come on computer okay hey what's, hey, what's going on guys i, I want to make this interesting, uh, interesting video uh, on postage, postage in, the in the united states, states. and this only pertains states. to the united states um, um but it's, but it's very very interesting basically, basically what i have here is a book of stamps and these are all individual three cent postage stamps Okay, with that uh, teapot on there. And I have a letter, which I had mailed within the United States, and only cost me three cents to mail this letter. How is that possible? When first class mail, if you want to grab a, a letter and mail to someone, it would cost you 46 cents, right? Well, that's why I'm making the video. Something that a lot of people don't know is that, is that you can still send non-domestic non mail within, within the United, the United States, States for three cents. Now, there's, now, there's a specific amount. amount. I think it's two cents per half ounce, but the, but the average, average letter with a piece of paper in there is going to cost you three cents in postage. Now, I want to kind of break this out and explain that, exactly yeah. why. Why is that? How is that possible? I paused it because I needed to be able to explain to you guys uh, if you're hearing reverb, it's because I'm using a particular surround sound Bluetooth speaker, and that's the reverb. But I wanted to explain to you guys that he explains something, and he does it so simple and clear that even you all will get it. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, he explains that domestic means within the government. Non-domestic means without the government. 
watch and see how he explains it. And you, when you think about it, you'll get it. Oh, you're going to get it? Oh, I'm telling mama. Ladies and gentlemen, the only drawback is I hit the pause button. And I thought I unhit the pause button, and I didn't. So I don't remember where it stopped at or where it started at. Let's just say he's going to be doing some explaining, and then I'm going to show you a website where you can go and get a copy of this information as to the proper understanding. But he will, and he does a very good job of explaining it to you. The document that I am referring to, I am going to place on our site, but I'm also going to give you the link for that site by showing you where to find it. Now, I'm not doing this so you can save yourself some money. I am doing this because you need to know what the actual authority is. Remember, the statutes are for the domestic franchises, employees, workers. Okay? That's what they did with Social Security. They created domestic franchises. Remember, the federal government has no jurisdiction or control within the state. Did you not know that? So he's explaining that domestic, in a sense, when the government uses the term domestic, it's not saying foreign or domestic regarding overseas. It's saying foreign or domestic with regards to the federal government. Are you part of the domestic federal government, federal franchise, or are you non-domestic? So your mail is non-domestic. It is not going within the federal government. It is going within the state. Hold on. Let's do that. There's, there's, there's special, special cases where, where could you could be like a highway, highway contractor, contractor where you're not the part of the union, but you still work for the post office. It's, it's, it breaks, it down, breaks down, into down into other unique situations. Unique situations. But generally speaking, generally speaking um, um, postal service, postal service people, 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 you know, post, 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 post office workers and, and postal, postal service servicemen and women are not government employees at all. They just work, they just work for a private business called, called the United States Postal Service. But anyway, when they took over the private corporation, they also took over previous government agencies as well as, as, well as its inherited assets, assets and liabilities, which include, which include delivering, delivering mail within, within all 50, 50 states, states um, that, were, that were... Now, you notice how he specifically highlighted, you may not have paid attention, within all 50 states, not without all 50 states. Without does not have the same meaning in legalese as it has in English. Without means... Oh, man, I'm doing this without you. Okay? Without means outside that jurisdiction. Pay attention. Or, uh, or, uh, non-domestic. Non -domestic. So basically, so basically what, you what you have here is you have, is you have a, 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 a company. The United States Postal Service, Service you have to look at it like a company. It's like, it's like Home Depot or Lowe's or, Lowe's or Walmart. It's just, it's just a business. business. But, when but when they took over, over they, still they still have to deliver. They still have to, to, still have to, to provide services, services for that set uh, rate, that postage rate, rate that was, was pre-existing. So, so what this means, means basically is if you address an envelope a certain way, you will pay, you will pay different, different postage than, than if you address it how you were taught to address it in America. In America. So, so there are a couple key things. So now, I learned when I were to, to send this, to clarify this to anyone getting this letter, because you do run the risk of uh, a mailman or um, a postal worker who does not know about this, and believe me, most of them don't. Most, most postal, postal workers, workers don't even know about this at all. But, but what, I what I did to protect, protect my letter, my letter and make sure it was not sent back asking, asking for more postage, postage because sometimes they will be returned that says, you know, more postage, postage is necessary, which is not, which is not true. They just, they just don't understand it. So they're giving it back to you because they don't know what's going on. But if you put this on the top right hand corner, exactly like this, okay, in this order, the first line you write first class non domestic, and then underneath you write without prejudice, underneath that you write USC. Dash one dash two o seven. The next line is BK dot one two. Now you notice he put USC. I thought it was a typo. It's not a typo. He put USC. It is not USC one dash two o seven. There's no such code. It's supposed to be UCC. Okay, that's his mistake. So that's one thing where he doesn't do it the way it's supposed to be done. It is UCC. Not USC, 
and it's no longer 1-207, it's 1-308. Okay? So, let's get past that. Do you see BK 12, Statute at Large, Chapter 71, Section 23, 37th Congress, Session Number 3? The Statute at Large, he put the actual statute, which is prima facie evidence of law. In order for the post office to reject this, they would have to rebut the document with another law that rebuts this. And the current laws, the the way statutory interpretation works, because the current laws say you have to pay 50 some cents per envelope now. However, however, there is a first in line, first in right rule. If there are two laws, or two statutes that are conflicting with one another, the one that came first is the one that has the greater weight. So we go by the first law, not the second one. Oh, oh is that true? Go do your research and find out. Do, do, statutes, statutes at large. At large. The, next the next line is chapter 71, section, section 23, and, and the final line is 37th Congress, Congress session, session, Roman, Roman, Roman numeral three. three. This will, this will specifically, specifically clarify, clarify the code, the code in which this this law is set. is set. So basically, if you get this, if a postal worker gets this, and they're like, "What? What is this?" They give it to their postmaster, they kind of look up this information, or they type this in, and they go, "Yeah." Or some postmasters will know this. They'll see this and go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's good." So you can see, I do have, you know, this is postmarked. This was delivered for three cents. Now, now, a couple, a couple things you have to be very careful of when you're doing this. When you write, when you write the state, for the end, for the end, I blocked off some of this information just because it, I'm, I'm, not I'm not giving this information as to who I was sending this to because it was for business and it's private and it's not, not for me to give that information out. But anyway, um, he made a mistake. You see, you don't get to do that. Congress has the ability of regulating commerce. He said it was for business. It's never for business. You don't have the right to conduct business under that law. That law is for the American people, not for businesses. Businesses are foreign to the state. Businesses are creatures of the state, okay? Or in their existence, chartered or otherwise, to the state. Just that simple. Continue. When you, write, when you state, write the state, you have to write the state, write the state out in longhand. For Pete, for Pete you cannot abbreviate a state. When you abbreviate a state on a letter, you're, 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 you're saying, saying that you're sending this through a federal zone. Okay. okay? By, the way, By the way, this will not work when you are sending it to a federal zone, such as prisons, courthouses, uh, schools. So you can't do it. Washington, D.C. as a whole is a federal zone. So this only works from basically private residences or businesses outside of federal zones. All right? But um, you have to write the state out longhand. You don't abbreviate, you don't abbreviate state the state and you do not use a zip code. The zip code system was created to, to basically narrow down different locations in within the United 50 states, okay, domestically under the U.S. government. So, if you're interested, if you're interested in this and you want to send letters for three cents, just Google non-domestic postage in U.S. or non-domestic mail. There's a bunch of websites that tell you how to do this. Um, some of them are like anti-government sites and it's a conspiracy. They're making you pay more than blah, blah, blah. It's not that. It's just information that you weren't given. There's information that they, that's out there that we are just not given for whatever reason. But... All the, all the postage that, you that you've been spending all these years, you know, when you buy your stamp for 46 cents or in past years, it was cheaper, it keeps going up and up, right? You just didn't, you just didn't understand that you were choosing to use the postal service as a business, as opposed to using the postal service to deliver your mail non-domestically outside the government's grip, pretty much. That's all it comes down to. But it's interesting. Now, I would not... Rely, rely on this message, this method, this method of, of mailing, mailing for, for very, very important, important things. If you're mailing, if you're mailing a bill, or if you're mailing, or if you're mailing something that's very, very important or, or time sensitive, don't do, don't do this. this. Because, because again, even though this, even though this is the law, law, legally they have to deliver this stuff. There's a lot of there's post, a lot of post uh, 
post offices, post offices and postal employees, employees that just don't know about this. About this. They're, just They're just not educated in this because it is rare that it's ever used. So there's, so there's always a chance you'll get your letter returned that says, you know, return for postage because they think that you don't have enough postage on there. They just don't understand what the law is. You can be, you know, you can be adamant and call the post office and say, hey, here's what the deal is. And or just keep. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody wants to really do a good, what they referred to in the past, solid for everyone else. All you have to do is take the law and do a writ of mandamus with the federal courts ordering the United States Postal Service to follow the law. Their statute, the statute that they are obligated to follow. Pay attention. Because I forgot to mention the rhythm and the style that you used to. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to download this like I told you I would. I, it's on the site already. I know it's there because I've had this document before. Yeah, I'm going to let it download. What you waiting on? Microsoft Edge. If, do I have Edge? I ain't got Microsoft Edge. We're going to allow you once because I don't like Edge. Oh, I don't care about you. We don't need you. I don't care about you neither. We don't need you neither. Sorry, I stopped a lot of programs from starting up when my computer starts up. Because that junk has been getting on my last nerve. We're going to get rid of this. And you know the person would have to be in New Hampshire. But we're going to get rid of this beginning, the date, and everything. Come on now, Microsoft Edge, get on out of my way. Let me finish my work. Well, if you just let it take control, and instead of just doing it once and do it always, what if I don't want it to be always? Who's that song? I'll be loving you always. All right. Now, why this? I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it online for y'all so y'all can have it. But I also said that I would tell you where it's located. You know what? I'm not opening Edge. Get on out of here, Edge. Nobody wants you. That's why I didn't do that. I wasn't trying to open Edge. I thought it needed Edge to do that. But I, I don't need Edge. You don't need to get an edge? No, I don't need no line or edge up or none, none of that stuff. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is on the familyguardian.org. Subjects, freedom, sovereignty. So, and the document is entitled. You know what? I just had the title of the document and I done changed it and everything. No, we got to go back. No, we ain't going back there. Not right now. I said we ain't going back there. Get on out of here. We ain't going back there right now. This should have been done already. This is what I needed. This ain't here. Oh, well. We're going to have to just ignore that for now. Uh-oh. Has an invalid hash. Well, then you need to uninvalid that. Hash thing. Hash, you're it. Hashtag. I already said it's called Mailing to Sovereign States. That's the title. Mailing to Sovereign States. I'm going to copy it twice because I already have it copied there at the top. Okay. Mailing to Sovereign States. Mailing to the Post Office of the United States of America. You notice how they put United in lowercase? Not using United States Postal Service, a private foreign corporation. And then they explain everything. And as they explain everything in this letter, y'all, that's what it is. It's a letter. As they explain everything and they highlight it, they send it to the post office. This letter, they don't create nothing new. They let you know when you use this stuff right here, these zip codes, these are federal zone zip codes. Or federal zones. That's what the zip code service was set up for. Look up zip codes. Okay. Then here is the DMM. Domestic Mail Manual. Domestic Mail Manual. You can find it online here. And they give you address. 
not male, I mean all male not bearing the simplified address, blah, 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 may bear a delivery address that contains at least some of the following. I'm about to get some people's, I'm about to get up in some people's anuses, y'all, with my foot. All the way up to the kneecap. That's what the Family Guardian and I forgot who else is there. Family Guardian and SEDM. This is what they do, ladies and gentlemen. They provide you the case law, which is why I give them a lot of respect. Sometimes they ain't 100% right, but for the most part, they be right. Okay? They be right. It's all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to see that because of the research that these individuals have done, do your research based upon this research. Okay, pay attention. Told you 18.6. I said 62. I was wrong. When the Postal Reorganization Act, see attachment B, was passed, the USPS was still required to uphold the contracted rate from 1863. Yes, they were. When you go and you read that act, it says that that was a forever act. You talk about forever stamps, that was the forever stamp rate. Okay, and yes, you don't have to use a zip code. They put the public law and everything here. They, they, you know what? Give it to the family garden, y'all, for showing y'all how to mail a letter. So when you do your change of addresses, as a matter of fact, my printer is on. You know what I'm about to do? I'm about to print this mother. Okay. 1863-37 Congress, Session 3, passed in Law 12, Statute at Large, Chapter 71, specifically Section 23, and they attach that here, which is still valid today. You don't have to say today, which is still valid today. No, which is still valid. You don't need today. Okay. Like the Today Show? Yeah, like the Today Show. You know, ladies and gentlemen, have you guys ever heard the song by the Gap Band, Burn Rubber On Me? And they, they talk about getting up early in the morning to find them another lover and all that other stuff. Now, it ain't the best song in the world, but if you listen to the song, all they're doing is clowning the whole way through. If you listen to... The original version of that song, you'll see that they're joking around throughout the whole song. The song was a joke to begin with. They called it Burn Rubber on Me. How you gonna burn rubber on somebody? Okay, so they were playing on words throughout the whole song. So, look here. Um, some of the people I deal with are morons. Some of the people who watch my videos are idiots. No, 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 no. It's okay. Demographics. So, I didn't say the majority of them. No, I said some of them. Those who are not my people. Yeah, they, they're those idiots say they don't like my antics. Look here, you ignorant mother... I mean, persons. I'm from the generation where people played on words. I'm from the generation where people talked about your mama. Without hesitation. I'm from the generation where they talked about bagging and capping on people. And they didn't mean by pulling out a gun. That's the generation I'm from. I'm from the generation where everybody was using puns. Because it was punny. Okay, that's the generation I'm from. Because I'm from that generation. Everybody else who was part of that generation. Morris Day. Oak tree. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Go ahead, go back and listen to Morris Day and Jerome and see how much clowning they did throughout every, just about every single song. Okay? Uh, Gigolos Get Lonely too. Come on now! You know that man wasn't serious about making that song. Now, don't wait for me. Man, that beat is on hit. 
the words, not so much. Because, you know, the words talk about something that, uh, whew, can't handle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so for those people who don't appreciate the antics, the problem that you have is you don't realize that the people of my generation do appreciate it because they grew up listening to what I grew up listening to. They can relate to the music. That's why they tell me about how the music takes them back. So, because you don't like something, I apologize. We're going to do what Maxwell said, and we're going to stop the world. Can somebody stop the world? We're going to stop the world because you don't like something. Ignorant mother... Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, Lord. I forgot to change this right here. And so now I got to cancel the printing. I got to cancel the printing, dude. I got to go cancel that printing because... Let's see. I need to see this anyway. I got to cancel the printing because I got to edit this. Okay, got to edit it. What I need to do is I need to find out where the download is so that I'll have a copy. And so I'm getting ready to do that next. No. No, 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 no. I said we're going to cancel the printing. You heard me. Sitting up there trying to be slick. I'm going to try to sneak one in. It has the person who did it originally. It has their address in it. Ladies and gentlemen, I agree with them wholeheartedly. You should not be using zip codes. As a matter of fact, I am sending out some documents right now. And you saw when I was sending out the document the other day, I put NA. Now, guess what I get to do if I choose to? I can abbreviate the state name if I choose to. Because the post office doesn't control that. For some reason, everybody thinks that they can copyright a name. The post office has no control over a state's name. The state controls that. The post office did not create CA. The state of California created that. You understand? Just because you call me by a name and you give me a nickname, that doesn't change the fact that that belongs to me and not to you. You created a nickname concerning my interests. Better go back and look at the 9th and 10th Amendment. They don't have any jurisdiction over that. They don't get to control that. But I agree with them. Because there's a presumption that they control the name, then spell it out, people. Spell it out! Spell it out. Zip code exempt per USPS domestic mail manual. You don't need a zip code. Non-domestic. Make sure you put non-domestic. Make sure you do that. You notice how he puts PMB, private mailbox? Make sure. You document that that's private property. Oh, you know what? I like the way he did the name. I can't tell if his first name is Isaac and last name Joshua or his last name is Joshua, first name Isaac. But I like the way he did his name. It has nothing to do with syntax grammar. It has everything to do with this is my name. You know what? His family lives in a coffin. <laughs> okay. Now... Technically, I don't believe you need to put family, but that's what he did, and I'm just going to tell y'all, that's what y'all do. And you notice where he sent it? He sent it to the main postmaster at the post office saying, hey, I'm going to be sending out my mail. You want to give me a problem? Bring it. Okay? So, and he named the postmaster by name. Okay, they are not to interfere with the delivery or passage of the mails. They cannot retard the mails. Title 18, Section 1701. They cannot retard the mail. Now, he put the conspiracy against rights and the deprivation of rights under color of law. Yeah, I can handle that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this document I will put up for you guys. <coughs> My hope is I could highlight, sorry, I had to cough. This is the one I wanted. Okay. Which is the one I was supposed to be downloading, but that this ain't that ain't the document I just downloaded. 
Okay, remember I downloaded the Family Guardian. So let me let me check on something because y'all take a look. Oh no, okay, no, 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 no. I oh god, I see what went on. Okay, this is the document from the young man who did the video, the one who is the cutlery master. Okay, cutlery lover. Okay, this is the document from him. This is the letter he was talking about. And notice this. They attach the U.S. Postal junk to this. This talks about the zip codes, what the address needs to have. These are their regulations. Hold on, because eyes coming. Hold on. Okay. If you ever lean on me. I don't even know who sings the original song. I just remember there was a movie that came out, and that was the theme song for the movie. And I went and I saw the original preview of the movie, and then guess what? They changed it. They didn't stick to the original theme or anything. Okay? And it was about this guy, the guy who plays on Living Single as... Man, I can't even think of their names right now. The uh, the one who, uh, you know, had the little deep voice and, you know, was what Maxine or whatever her name was and blah, blah, blah. Well, he starred in the movie. And the unique thing about it is, yeah, they changed a lot and I didn't like the way they changed things. Ladies and gentlemen, if it were me, I hit the wrong button. I hit the left click, I mean the right click instead of the left click. So it ain't going to open. But I am gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna open it. Okay, come on now, hurry up! Lord have mercy. See, this is because of y'all. Told y'all I'm gonna blame it on you. Because I can't blame it on myself, so y'all just gonna have to just bear it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Again, this document explains why they are doing what they're doing. It explains the laws. It explains the information. I would say that that document is 10 pages long. It can be shortened, but it also includes exhibits. Okay. So, because the original letter is 10 pages, it includes these exhibits. Oh, they put this actual stat at large, 1970. Okay, I, I wonder if they highlight it, because what I'll do, if I get some time, I'll go through and I'll highlight the sections, because highlighting is easy. This is, ladies and gentlemen, highlighting is easy. Watch this. Give me you. Come on down here. Let's highlight some stuff. We're going to highlight here into three. Come on now, I want to highlight. It's supposed to be highlighting. It ain't highlighting. I said it was easy, and it's proven it ain't easy. Yeah, highlight too. I I had it clicked. See, click. What are you doing? Then then it needs to be a top performance. You go and take care of that. No, gonna get out my face. Sorry. Uh, sometimes they just interrupt without asking for permission to interrupt. So I apologize to that uh, to y'all for that. It ain't letting me highlight. Uh, let's see. Nope. It ain't letting me highlight, so I can't highlight it, y'all. Oh, shucky, shucky, shucky now. All right, anyway, let's get, uh, and be it further enacted that the maximum standard weight of a single rate letter postage is one half ounce blah 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 be it further enacted that the rate of postage on a domestic letter transmitted in the mails of the United States and not exceeding one half ounce in weight shall be uniformed at three cents and for each half ounce or fraction thereof additional weight 
there shall be a charge of an additional rate of three cents to be in all cases prepaid by postage stamps plainly affixed to the letter. Now hold on now. Got one more to read, y'all, because I didn't even know I stopped on there, y'all. I promise you. Oh, that's why I can't highlight it. I don't have no edit on. Ladies and gentlemen, we we definitely gonna be editing and we're gonna be highlighting and editing and we're gonna add we're gonna edit no we're gonna add sorry what am i doing add text Okay, there you go. That's how we do it. We just gonna add text. And now I'm gonna get rid of that right there and I'm just gonna do this right here, typewriter. Now, hold on now. This is the weight and half ounce. This is the section we're going to. No, we, we're supposed to be here, sorry. Be a further than act of first class mail and versus all correspondence wholly or partially in writing except that mentioned in the third class. The second class embraces all mailable matter exclusively in print and regularly issued at stated periods without addition by writing, mark, or sign. And the third class, and pay, pay attention. Stated period without addition by writing, mark, or sign. The third class embraces blah, 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 blah. Again, this tells you everything you need to know about mailing a letter. And this is where we get the drop box. Man, they got the drop on them. Be it further enacted that the rate of postage on all letters, not transmitted through the mails of the United States, but delivered through the post office or its carriers, commonly described as local or drop box letters and not exceeding one half ounce in weight shall be uniformed at two cents and an additional rate for each half ounce or fraction thereof because you delivered it to the post office they didn't have to come pick it up for the additional rate to be in all cases prepaid by postage stamp affixed to the envelope of such letters but no extra postage or carrier fees shall hereafter be charged or collected upon letters delivered by carrier or upon letters collected by them for mailing or delivery booyah 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 ladies and gentlemen there is your information okay All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh, I didn't want this one. Okay, like I said, this is how I'm going to do it. And we're going to take this little sticky note, and we're going to put you right here. Let's move you right there. Okay, so it will be right here. That's how you're going to find it. And with this right here, uh-uh. I didn't ask for that. And we're going to unsticky the notes. The reason why it won't let me highlight is because I can't select the words because of the document being an image and not a Word doc. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, there you are about your postage and the law. And remember, it says that in all cases, it says no extra postage or carrier fees shall hereafter be charged. Hereafter means for eternity because they didn't put a date on it. The only way to undo this is to undo the entire act. It has not been amended. Go ahead and check to see if it's been amended. Go ahead. I dare you. So a writ of mandate or writ of mandamus in a matter like this done right or a declaratory judgment. 
which is what I'm getting ready to do against the post office because I'm bringing a lawsuit against the post office for these very same issues. Okay? I am bringing a lawsuit against the post office for these very same issues. Oh, they put the whole statute there. Look at that. And then they put the criminal conspiracy and all of that stuff up in here from Tuttle. Look at these brothers. Okay. That's Family Guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I do hope, I know that so many people have talked about this over the years, and I do know that they have, but I do hope, and I want I want to show y'all something. Oh, that's right, we're supposed to show y'all that too. I do hope that you understand that this has not changed. This has not changed. So both these documents will be on our website. And I would definitely say amend the document that I just had because it will need some amendments. Okay? This explains exactly who's who, why they who they is, and this is 200, 200, 38 pages long. Let's see. 238 pages, I told you. This ain't no joke. This is the Family Guardian. No, no. This is, yeah, this is the Family Guardian. Sorry, had to correct myself. I thought I was going to get it confused with the other one. This is the Family Guardian. That's what the 238 pages is for. Give you all the facts you need. Family Guardian, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got to go. Got to work to do. I'm trying not to go out there, but I got to go out there. And I'm also trying to get by with the uh, electromotricity. But... All my batteries is charged, so I'm about to shut down. I'm about to let this computer upload this video, and then I'm going to go lay down because I'm tired. I want to go outside and do some work, but told you this is back-breaking and straining work. Got to go. Y'all take care. I hope this information was helpful. If it wasn't helpful, go and ask your mama for some other helpful information. Before we let you go, he said, go ask your mama. Oh, look at him. Isn't he so sweet? Hey, you know what? We're going to put it under the right to property. The right to property. And you know what? We're going to create its own folder. Watch this. It's going to give me the opportunity of creating a directory to set P-O-S-T-A-G-E, two cent postage, okay? I forgot how to do cent, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just going to spell it out. It's been a while. <laughs> Sorry, that was me yawning, because it was a long night, and it's been a long day. So the folder is two cent postage mailing. Ladies and gentlemen, all the information is going to be up on the site for your perusal. Okay, it will be up shortly. One of the folders, I mean, files is long, 200 and some odd pages, and it's not just a regular 200 and some odd page file that has images in it. So because it has images, that makes it a larger file. And so with this tethering and being not in an area with a good signal, it takes a minute. So this is me letting you know that by the time the video is up, the files will be up. Take care of yourselves, people. Hope everything goes well. Gotta go.